Traditional methods of installing operating systems manually by CD or DVD add too much of an administrative overhead for any organization or business. You're going to be spending too much time doing the same repetitive stuff over and over and over again. Imaging is more commonly used in today's environment. Imaging is the process of taking a so-called you know, snapshot or copy of an entire physical hard disk of any computer or server and storing it to the file on a, another server or external media. There are a lot of third-party imaging tools out there. You might have heard of Semantic Ghost or Alteris or a lot of other softwares out there. You can take an image and then deploy it to multiple computers at the same time. So the benefit of an image is that you spend the time you want to prepare a customized operating system with the software you want, the settings you prefer, you know, any type of customization. All the time you want to spend on one machine, you can spend customizing it without any problems. Then you're going to deploy that customized operating system to all your desktops in one shot. So if you were to spend, say, four hours on every single desktop, from installing to customizing to adding software to adding updates, patches, you know, add-ons, everything, you can still spend that same four hours on one desktop, which we call our base image or base machine or source machine. Then after you image the machine up to your server, you can roll out that image to as many computers as you want within a lot smaller of a time frame than sitting behind each machine and customizing them. Windows Server 2008 provides a new and improved role called Windows Deployment Services or WDS. This server role, which is available on all editions of Windows Server 2008 for a standard enterprise and data center, allows you to deploy earlier versions of Windows but our focus will be primarily on Windows Server 2008 deployment. When we use Windows Server 2008 deployment, we're basically be using a server image or an operating system image that has been given to us by Microsoft on media. There are many different types of WDS images that we're going to talk about. Primarily, you can extract these image types and these images from either a downloadable media or a media you receive on DVD or CD. A WDS image, which usually will end an extension of WIM, can be broken down into two types. First, you have the install image. An install image is an image that stores the operating system. And due to the nature of the Windows Server 2008 media, and it being an image-based technology, a single Windows Server 2008 DVD stores all the different available editions of Windows within a single OS image. So your install image might have all the different additions and all the different installations as far as full and core of Windows Server 2008. An install image has an extension of WIM and can be located on the installation media in a folder called Sources at the root of the DVD. Each install image is an architecture specific. So make sure when you want to install a 64 or 32-bit installation that you download or you purchase the proper architecture image. Each install image can have the different editions of the Windows operating system within it. Another type of WDS images are the boot image. The boot image is available also in the same place as the install image. Using the boot image, your computer will boot off of a menu that will display all the available operating systems that can be installed within the WDS server. We can have an unlimited number of install images where the boot image will basically load and show all the available install images. You're basically going to start with a boot image that will load up and show you all available install images. And then based on the different additions and the different installations of those install images that you have loaded onto your WDS server, your boot image will show you a menu that you can choose and start the installation of one of those versions. Boot images are broken down into two sub-image types, the capture image and the discover image. A capture image, which is created by WDS, is used to capture an operating system up to a Windows Deployment Services server for later deployment. So for example, if you have an installation of, let's say, Server 2008, and you want to take that and copy it down to a WDS server, you're going to use a capture image. You're going to create the capture image on the WDS server. Then you're going to use that capture image to boot up and copy the contents 
of your installation to the WDS server. Now, Windows Deployment Services uses a method called Pixie. Pixie booting allows a machine to boot off the network, to find the Windows Deployment Services, and then to load your boot image. For a client to be able to contact the WDS server, the network card must be Pixie compliant. A majority of today's network cards do have a Pixie or network boot component. Now, for a computer that does not support Pixie environment, you might need to assist the boot up process and assist the network copying process. A discover image is an image designed by WDS to be copied to some type of external media, say CD or DVD, that we can use to boot a computer that has all the drivers and all the configurations needed for it to be able to then contact the WDS server over the network. You manually create the Discover image on your WDS server. You can then use it, as we said, to transfer it to a CD or DVD and to boot up from your system. The WDS process is very simple. A machine boots up, uses the network card's Pixie technology to locate the WDS server. The WDS server then sends the assigned boot image to the client, and after the client chooses the desired install image, the WDS server starts to copy the image from the install down to the computer. By default, the installation process will appear as if you're running it from a local media. It doesn't look any different. You might actually think there's a CD or DVD in the computer. But instead, what's happening is it's being copied and streamed from the WDS server. We can also add an unattended file to our WDS server to make our installation unattended. As we spoke about prior to this, the same auto-unattend.xml file will be used on a WDS server. When planning a WDS server deployment, you have to have a few small things in mind. You'll require an Active Directory environment with DNS, because name resolution and finding the WDS server is done through Active Directory DNS. You also need a DHCP server to obviously hand out IP addressing, and also must be pre-configured for your WDS server. Obviously, your images have to be stored on an NTFS partition within your WDS server. And lastly, have in mind that WDS is not available in any of the server core installations. To manage and maintain WDS from the command line, we can use the WDS util command line utility. And for those of you who want to deploy WDS and DHCP server role on the same server, have in mind you have to configure the port 67 and option 60 settings on your WDS server that we'll take a look at in a later demo. When planning on deploying a WDS server, you have to have in mind that we can configure our WDS server to respond in three different ways to clients. The first method is to not just respond at all. That's basically having a WDS server that's enabled and configured, but not responding to any clients. The second method, which is very, very beneficial, is the respond to known. The key to using the respond to known is to make sure you have an Active Directory environment available. Basically, if you configure a WDS server to respond to known computers, all the computers that are in Active Directory or members of the domain will be able to receive a response from WDS and start to copy an image. One of the benefits of this is to prevent unknown computers or, you know, untrusted computers from accessing your network. The last thing you want is for someone to come into your network, turn on their computer, notice you have a WDS environment available, and try to image their machine or another machine from your WDS server. For those of you who are thinking, what do we do with computers that are not a member of our Active Directory environment, we can do something called pre-staging. By pre-staging our computers, we're basically going to pre-create the computer accounts in Active Directory with the proper names. So when that computer comes to contact WDS server and requests an image, it will tell the WDS server its existing computer name. Then, Active Directory will be queried, and if the computer name is available in Active Directory, the WDS server will respond to that client and begin imaging process. Lastly, the last step to configuring a WDS server could be to set it to respond to all. When you configure to respond all, basically any computer that requests an image from WDS will receive the image and start the imaging process. WDS also supports unicast transmissions of an image, in addition to multicast transmissions, where you can send one image over the network to multiple computers, which in turn will provide you with an increased savings and bandwidth. When you want to only image one machine, it is still recommended to set up a unicast image 
to prevent any additional traffic that could come from setting up a multicast session. WDS also supports something new called scheduled casting, which can be configured to transmit an image at a certain time or after a certain set of computers have contacted WDS server, or even both. This way you can image a lab or a location over the weekend or at off-peak times. Obviously an answer file must be used for the unattended installation to happen. Otherwise you'll come back to work on Monday and all the installations will be at the first page waiting for you to click Next to start installing. In summary, WDS or Windows Deployment Services allows us to roll out, predefine and pre-create images of Windows Server 2008, making our deployment a lot faster compared to previous versions of Windows. Windows Server 2008's WDS role also allows us to image prior versions of Windows Server, like say Windows Server 2003 or Windows XP. Setting up their image is a little bit more complicated, but is still a lot easier and will help speed up your recovery process and reduce the time from when you purchase hardware to when you can deploy it to your users. WDS also allows you to image servers based on predefined times. So for example, if you have five servers you want to deploy over the weekend, you can configure a scheduled cast to set them up, allow them to start deploying, let's say in the middle of the night. So when you come back on Monday morning, your servers are prepared, deployed, and with the use of unattended files, properly configured and ready to start being used in the beginning of the day.